Hello, in this video we're going to do a proof and we're going to go through it very, very carefully. Let y be a subset of a metric space capital X. The closure of y is closed. That is, the closure of the closure of y is equal to the closure of y. So let's first backtrack a little bit and I'm just going to refresh only the definitions that we need in order to do this proof. So first recall, a point X and a metric space capital X is adherent to Y if for all little r greater than zero, the intersection of the open ball centered at x of radius r intersected with y is not empty. Okay, then also uh, note that y bar, this is called the closure of y. This is the set of all adhered points of y. So all of the elements in this set are adherent to y. Okay, so it's just a collection of all the points that are adherent to y. So it's the collection of points that are adherent to y. I won't write it. All right, and we say that y is closed if the closure of y is equal to y. Okay, so those are the things that we need in order to do this proof. So to show the closure of y is closed, basically that means if you, you know, if you have the closure of y, to show it's closed would mean that if you take the closure, you get back the original set, which is exactly what you see here. Okay, uh, another fact that um, you should know, and this requires a very easy proof, so we won't prove it in this video, and you probably already know it. Every set is contained in its closure. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the proof. Proof. So we have to show um, these two sets are equal. So note, every set is contained in its closure. In particular, the closure of y is contained in the closure of the closure of y. As every set is contained in its closure. So now we just have to show that the closure of the closure of y is contained in the closure of y. So the claim here, because we use double inclusion, right? We have two sets to show they're equal. We have to show they're subsets of each other. So the claim here is that the closure of the closure of y is contained in the closure of y. So that's what we have to show in this problem. So let's think about that. I'm just going to come down here and do some scratch work just to motivate what's happening. So we have to show this is true. So to do that, we'll start by taking an element uh, in this set, right? So we'll start, let's just do a little scratch work here. So we're trying to show that this is contained in this. So normally what we would do is we would take an element here, and then now we have to show this element is here. So what does that mean? That means we need to show that x is in the closure of y. So what does that mean? That means that x is adherent to y. So we need to show that for all r greater than zero, Okay, so for all r greater than zero, the open ball centered at x of radius r intersected with y is not empty. That's what we have to show. If we can show that, then that shows that x is adherent to y, and so that shows that x is in the closure of y, and that completes the proof because we've shown this inclusion. Okay, so to show this, um, we just have to go through and try it. So notice it says for all r greater than zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna like do some scratch work here and then write it neatly in the proof here. So let's see. So if we were to take an X here, okay, what does that mean? Well, if we take X in here, that means X is in the closure of the closure, right? That means that X is adherent 
to this set here. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, for all r greater than zero, bxr intersected with this is non-empty. Okay, so that means there's some element here, which we can call anything. Let's call it z. And also here. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we have some inequality here, dx z less than r. That's what it means to be in the open ball. And this means that z is adherent to y. So that would mean that b z r intersected y is not empty. So now we're going to have another, another inequality here, d z r. And in particular, this also means that there's an element, um, well, in particular, this means there's an element in here. I'm not going to use z. Let's call it w, okay? So then we have some w in b z r and some w in y. Oh, look at that. We have an element in y, which is what we need, right? Which, which is what we need here. We need to show that we have an element in y and an element here. So I'm thinking we can use these two conditions here to create two inequalities and maybe use the triangle inequality to show that this contains an element. And the element we're going to use is this one. So it's, it's kind of like a one-way proof. You know, I've, I've already worked this out, but you just take an element and you just follow your way there. So the only adjustments I'm going to make to the scratch work in the actual proof are that instead of using r, I'm going to use r over 2 because we're going to add them. r over 2 plus r over 2 is r. All right, let's go back to the proof. If that didn't make sense, hopefully the proof will. Let's do it. So take any x in the closure of the closure, okay, and let r be a positive number. And again, our goal, our goal is here. Okay, this is our goal. Okay, so now we're just going to use the fact that x is in here. So since x is in the closure of the closure of y, x is adherent to the closure of y. So that means that the open ball centered at x of radius r over 2 intersected with the closure of y is non-empty. So that means that there exists some element z in this intersection. So that means that z is in each of these sets. Okay, so it's in this set. And it's also in this set here. This is going to give us an inequality. This means that the distance between x and z is less than r over 2. We talked about that down here, except I didn't use r over 2 here. What does this mean? So since z is in the closure of y, okay, z is in the closure of y, that means z is adherent to y. So that means that the open ball centered at z of radius r over 2 intersected with y is not empty. Hence, there exists some element which I'll call w, which lives inside the intersection. Thus, w is in this open ball centered at z of radius r over 2 and w is in y. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show that w, right, we want to show that this is true. We're going to show that w is in this set here using the triangle inequality. So then, so to show that w is in the open ball centered at x of radius r, we have to show that the distance between x and w is less than r. So we look at the distance between x and w. That's less than or equal to the distance between x and well, let's see. This tells us that the distance between x and z is less than r over 2. So we can say distance between x and z plus, and then here we can say distance between z and w. Okay? And this is the triangle inequality. So this is going to be less than r over 2 because this is in this set. So this is less than r over 2. This is going to be less than r over 2 because w is in this set.
So this is plus r over 2. And that's equal to r. So we have that dxw is less than r. So that means that w is in the open ball. Okay, it's in the open ball centered at x of radius r, right, which we have down here in the scratch work. But w is also in y. So we have these two conditions together. So thus, w is in the open ball centered at x of radius r intersected with y. So this set is not empty. So bxr intersected with y is not empty. Let's do a full backtrack of what happened. We took an x in this set, okay, and we showed for every r greater than zero, this intersection is not empty. Therefore, this, sec, this x, so x is adherent to y. That's exactly what it means for x to be adherent to y, right? That's exactly what it means. It's, it's even here, right? It's even up here when we defined it, right? Adherent to y if for all great, r greater than zero, this set is not empty. So we did it here, right? r greater than zero, this set is not empty. So it's adherent to y. So what does that mean? So that means that x is in the closure of y. So we started with an x in the closure of the closure. We showed that x is in the closure. So the closure of the closure is contained in the closure. By double inclusion, we have that the closure of the closure is equal to y, the closure of y. Therefore, um, you know, y is closed. So y is closed. And that completes the proof. So uh, I went through it in a lot of detail. Um, you know, again, if you look at this in a book, it's going to be really short. But hopefully this helps someone who is trying to learn some stuff. Good luck.